Okay, good morning. Uh, we will start in a minute. Okay, so good morning and uh, uh, good afternoon, probably, or uh, evening to online participants. And uh, welcome to the uh, workshop uh, uh, open forum on data flow and uh, uh, trust uh, worthy the uh, data sharing. Uh, my name is Yoichi uh, Ida from the Japanese Ministry of Internal Affairs and Communications. And I'm also serving as the chair uh, uh, on uh, of the uh, uh, Committee on Digital Economy Policy at OECD. So it is my uh, great pleasure to have all of you here today. And uh, uh, my, uh, our previous uh, uh, first original intention uh, to host this session uh, was uh, we wanted to to uh, exchange some understandings and uh, 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 ambitions or uh, foresight uh, by different uh, stakeholders, uh, including some other uh, uh, government. Uh, but uh, because the time slot is uh, uh, relatively uh, uh, early in the morning and uh, we do not have many uh, 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 panelists, uh, I, I hope uh, we have one panelist online, but uh, 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 we don't have only one uh, speaker. Uh, except for me. So uh, I think uh, uh, in this session uh, we would like to explain what we have been uh, pursuing uh, uh, over the last uh, several years uh, in to promote uh, uh, cross-border data flow uh, and which uh, has been mainly uh, discussed uh, in uh, governmental bodies uh, up until now. But uh, I think uh, from our uh, perspective, it is even more important to discuss this matter with multi-stakeholders. So I hope uh, uh, I can share uh, our uh, intention and our uh, objectives and uh, uh, would like to uh, listen to the uh, opinions, the comments uh, from uh, uh, you multi-stakeholders uh, so that uh, we can uh, develop uh, this effort uh, uh, to toward next year and uh, even beyond uh, with uh, uh, multi-stakeholder approach rather than governmental uh, discussion. So uh, in the beginning, uh, uh, let me uh, uh, use a few slides to explain what we have been doing until now. So uh, we started uh, our discussion on data flow uh, when we took the G7 uh, uh, presidency in the year 2016. Uh, 
At that time,、uh, in G7, there was no ministerial track for ICT or digital policy. So it was、uh, eventually the first G7 ICT、uh, ministers' meeting. Uh, Which uh, was uh, held uh, uh, in Japan、uh, in April. So it is uh, already uh, almost seven years ago. And uh, uh, among uh, various uh, topics uh, in the agenda, we uh, proposed to discuss、uh, free flow of information across borders. And uh, our uh, uh, intention was uh, uh, cross border. Flow of information is、uh, very important、uh, to support、uh, economic growth through innovation by、uh, data utilization and digital technologies. But at the same time, it is uh, uh, very uh, fundamental basis for a democratic uh, society uh, to ensure the freedom of expression, freedom of uh, uh, speech uh, online. So, uh, we uh, proposed the discussion uh, in the uh, ministers' meeting together with other agenda items, and uh, uh, we agreed it is important to promote uh, uh, cross border、uh, flow of information. But at the same time,、uh, there are、uh, necessity for government to、uh, strengthen and care. Uh, the uh, uh, protection of privacy, protection of intellectual property rights, pro uh, uh, promotion of uh, uh, strengthening of、uh, cyber security, and so that、uh, the people can、uh, join the digital economy、uh, without concern. So, this discussion was uh, uh, succeeded by uh, the uh, uh, following uh, uh, presidencies, such as Italy and Canada. So, we discussed、uh, how to formulate the importance of cross border、uh, information flow. At the same time, how、uh, we can uh, accommodate uh, the necessity for government to、uh, increase trust among people and uh, 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 take uh, measures uh, to protect、uh, privacy, intellectual property rights, and even consumers. After three years of discussion, probably from 2016 to 2018, we found every time we discuss、uh, this matter, there are some countries who emphasize freedom online is very important and、uh, protection of privacy, protection of uh, uh, consumer, and uh, uh, improvement of cybersecurity is the secondary、uh, importance. But on the other side, other countries emphasize protection of privacy and uh, uh, increasing trust uh, among uh, users or consumers is the most important. And、uh, it can be uh, uh, prioritized before、uh, freedom online. So,、uh, in the year 2019, we wanted to, to fill this gap、uh, between different governments. And、uh, in that year, we took the、uh, G20 presidency and we held the Osaka summit. So, on that occasion, we proposed、uh, the concept of data free flow with trust. So, the original purpose of this concept is we need to free flow across borders of data、uh, to promote innovation, to、uh, maximize benefit、uh, from. Uh, technologies and data utilization, but at the same time, people do not、uh, want to use data or technology、uh, if there is no trust on data and technology. So,、uh, in the end, these two factors, freedom and trust, are not trade off or、uh, contradictory, but these two elements、uh, have to be complementary to each other. So,、uh, without trust, there is no freedom. And without freedom,、uh, we lose maximize, ma maximum benefit from innovation. So, we need to promote these two elements in the same at the same time in parallel.、Uh, and、uh, in that way, we can only、uh, achieve the better uh, environment, uh, enabling environment for digital economy. So, this uh, uh, concept uh, 
drew a lot of attention from uh, member countries of G20, and uh, uh, in the beginning, uh, uh, different uh, uh, governments uh, interpreted in different uh, ways. And uh, I, I assume uh, we still have difference in understanding of this uh, concept, but we believe uh, data and digital policy framework needs to be different from country to country because uh, we all have different backgrounds we all have different social uh, conditions economic conditions and cultural conditions and the, uh, even the uh, uh, historical conditions are very different so uh, we cannot uh, uh, converge the uh, policy framework on data and digital technology uh, to one single harmonized uh, framework. So uh, while we maintain or develop uh, uh, different uh, policy frameworks and the regulations on data and the digital technology, country to country, uh, we need to increase, improve interoperability between countries. Uh, we, if we have different uh, policy frameworks, uh, we need to know how to bridge the gap between the different policy frameworks and the regulations and the data uh, uh, flow and the digital technology solution utilization should be smoothly uh, uh, passed across borders. So this is the uh, uh, our uh, uh, purpose of this discussion. And uh, after uh, 19, uh, 2019, uh, the uh, United Kingdom and Germany succeeded the discussion at the G7. And uh, uh, we agreed a roadmap for uh, G DFFT last year. So next uh, slide. So uh, I, I want to, to look back at what uh, does data free fluid trust mean. Uh, this is uh, the extract from Osaka Summit uh, Declaration. And this says, uh, uh, by uh, continuing to address challenges related to privacy, data protection, intellectual property rights, and security, we can further facilitate data-free flow and strengthen consumer and business trust. So we need to, to uh, achieve uh, uh, two uh, objectives at the same time by uh, taking appropriate measures and uh, uh, for, for, uh, by, by doing so uh, we can promote uh, uh, data flow uh, across borders and we can uh, maximize the benefit from uh, innovation. At the same time, some countries wanted to add uh, we will cooperate to encourage the interoperability of different frameworks. This is what I explained. And we affirm the role of data for development. This short phrase uh, uh, always uh, uh, causes some uh, uh, argument. Uh, and in my understanding, this is very natural. You know, the role of data uh, uh, must be contribute to economic and social development uh, in each country. Otherwise, uh, we, uh, there is no need for the government to, to discuss uh, data uh, uh, policy and the digital uh, regulation. But uh, in, in some cases, some countries uh, under, uh, interpret this sentence to admit uh, some uh, uh, asymmetry uh, treatment uh, between developed countries and the developing countries in pro uh, 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 admitting the data flow across borders. See, this is very uh, trade uh, 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 negotiation way of uh, 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 understanding, and uh, there can be uh, such a, a interpretation made. Uh, in the context of negotiation or discussion. But basically, uh, I understand this is a, a very ge general statement that data should be uh, uh, contribute to development, social and economic development of each country. So this is a uh, data free flow with trust. And uh, uh, after uh, 2019, uh, in 2021, 
the、uh, United Kingdom took the G7 presidency, and we discussed the DFFT and we、uh, agreed uh, the uh, roadmap uh, for DFFT. Next page, please. So,、uh, in that, at that time, in our discussion, we picked up、uh, four elements, and、uh, I believe this is not an、uh, exhaustive list. But this is a very good way to approach how we can operationalize the high level、uh, abstract concept of BFFT into action or into practice. So we picked up data localization, regulatory cooperation, government access, and data sharing approaches. These are the four elements uh, uh, G7 can,、uh, uh, governments agreed.、Uh, To uh, uh, emphasize uh, in promoting the concept of DFFT. So, data localization means、uh, we want to decrease the data localization requirement by many、uh, governments, and uh, uh, there should be some、uh, ways to decrease such、uh, unnecessary requirement. Uh, of course, there can be some legitimate cases, but we wanted to. Discuss and、uh, we wanted to explore、uh, what would be the uh, uh, alternative ways、uh, to protect some、uh, public legitimate、uh, policy objectives without requiring data localization to to private sector. This is the first item. Unfortunately, we haven't reached any concrete uh, conclusion uh, in our discussion, but I think it is very. Uh, uh, important element, and uh, uh, there should be other elements uh, like this uh, 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 that we need to approach、uh, to, to decrease and、uh, enable data flow across borders、uh, without losing、uh, legitimate public、uh, policy objectives. Second item is regulatory cooperation. This is uh, being uh, done by the group of、uh, privacy. Protection authorities from seven countries. So, uh, this is uh, uh, running uh, 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 in, in, in parallel、uh, with our discussion, and uh, privacy uh, protection authorities are gathering maybe twice or three times per year and uh, exchange uh, the information on their uh, regulations, uh, domestic regulations, and discuss how to、uh, facilitate the cross border flow of personal. Uh, data or privacy related data. So, this would be very important, but uh, we, have, uh, we haven't heard any uh, 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 practical uh, outcome uh, on uh, policy measures、uh, from the discussion. But、uh, it is very important to continue the discussion among those authorities. Third element is government access. This is uh, uh, something uh, we have been discussed under uh, uh, Committee on Digital Economy Policy of OECD. And we started this discussion two years ago, and the discussion by the expert group is still going on. But、uh, I expect、uh, in the uh, OECD uh, digital ministerial meeting、uh, week after next,、uh, which will be held in Gran Canaria,、uh, we will see some output from the discussion. This、uh, working group is very unique because in OECD、uh, Digital Economy Policy Committee is a, a group of government officials or in, who are involved in digital、uh, policy. And、uh, their background are basically、uh, economics or legal or、uh, technology. But、uh, in this、uh, working group, there are experts from uh, ju uh, justice ministries and、uh, Law enforcement uh, uh, officials and uh, 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 privacy protection authorities are gathering to discuss how we can uh, uh, find the common elements、uh, among、uh, OECD countries in, in the aspect of uh, uh, protecting uh, private sector, uh, uh, private sector's personal data. Uh, from government access. So, this is a、uh, uh, very uh, 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 unique discussion because, you know, the、uh, 
government officials from uh, uh, justice and uh, law enforcement are discussing how they are protecting private sector's data, uh, even when they need to access such data uh, uh, to respond to emergency or some criminal uh, investigation or uh, some other uh, exceptional cases. And there are some rules uh, in the procedure and uh, uh, criteria. So. Uh, the uh, working group uh, 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 discussed uh, the common elements among uh, 38 member countries and uh, extracted uh, the uh, common uh, standards for OECD countries on uh, government access uh, to uh, personal data held by private sector. So when this comes up, uh, I think uh, uh, this is not uh, creating a new standards or a new uh, principles because this is just uh, extract of current uh, implementation of uh, current practices in the by the government. But uh, during the discussion, we found there are some gaps uh, 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 in addition to commonalities. So uh, we may keep discussing. I, I'm not quite sure. It depends on those experts, but uh, there can be some uh, discussion to continue to improve the uh, criteria and the uh, behavior principles uh, for government, especially the uh, 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 Ministry of Justice or law enforcement uh, should protect when they need to access personal data held by uh, private sector. So uh, I, uh, I wish uh, you uh, all expect uh, some outcome uh, announced uh, in the OECD's ministerial meeting next week after next. And the final uh, element is data sharing approaches. I think uh, you may have noticed uh, three, those previous three elements are more or less uh, regulatory and government uh, 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 practices or regulations, but. Uh, in order to promote uh, data utilization or data flow, uh, it is very important to promote uh, uh, the restrictions or inconvenience which private sector are feeling uh, in the transaction. So we wanted to share, exchange the uh, current uh, practices, especially in the priority uh, sectors such as healthcare or medical care or uh, education or uh, 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 automobile transport or those uh, important uh, sectors. Uh, the countries are uh, 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 implementing uh, the different practices by private sectors. And this is not a regulatory matter, but this is uh, the business practices, which should be improved by exchanging good practices and learn from each other. So fourth element is more private sector affairs. And I, I believe uh, this is very important uh, in this roadmap. But uh, this is something, you know, we can discuss among uh, government officials, but uh, this is uh, uh, even more efficient uh, if uh, we have discussions uh, with multi-stakeholders uh, for this element. At the same time, uh, we are now uh, promoting our national data strategy. And uh, uh, it is, uh, it was uh, a elaborated last year based on the uh, uh, abstract high-level concept of DFFT. So uh, we are trying to promote uh, data flow and data utilization, data sharing uh, through the government's uh, data strategy. And uh, the basic uh, 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 concept is uh, uh, same with DFFT. So we need trust, uh, but we need, uh, uh, we need to keep uh, free, open, and enabling environment for data as much as possible. And uh, uh, we picked up four or uh, six uh, uh, items to, to promote international collaboration. Uh, and the one is trade agreement, privacy protection, security, and trust services, which is a kind of uh, 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 voluntary services uh, to provide uh, uh, how to uh, ensure the trust and credibility of data. 
And the uh, fifth uh, item is data utilization in general. And the uh, uh, last item is digital infrastructure to support uh, data flow. And this is uh, what uh, we have discussed inside the government. And uh, personally, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, not completely supportive of, of, of all those six elements. But uh, you know, if you look uh, at data policy and uh, digital technology policy from different angles, uh, there can be such a discussion argument uh, possible. OK, so, okay, so I, I skip this one. Uh, this is talking about the uh, AI uh, principles, uh, which we also pursued over the last uh, several years. And uh, uh, AI uh, uh, is also the fundamental element uh, in uh, future digital uh, society. Uh, so, uh, con uh, basic concept is uh, pretty much the same. We, we want to promote utilization, development, deployment of AI, which is based on human-centered uh, principles and democratic values, so that people do not need to worry too much about the deployment of AI solutions. So thank you very much uh, for, for your attention. And uh, uh, as I said, uh, there is one uh, panelist online, uh, Dr. Yokozawa uh, uh, is with us. So I uh, uh, would like to invite him to make any comment or suggestion or any uh, uh, questions. So please, Yokozawa sensei, please. Sorry, am I audible? Can, can you hear yeah. me? Uh, yes, now I can hear you. Okay, okay, thank you. Well, actually, thank you very much uh, for inviting me here. I had uh, some trouble to go into this room, but the, uh, very happy to be with you, uh, distinguished panelists and distinguished audience. So um, my name is Mark Yokozawa, and I, my, I am working uh, with Ida-san in OECD and also the, in APEC as a representative from the uh, International Chamber of Commerce. Uh, which is the uh, in in all over the world we have ICC has a branch uh, and the membership chamber of commerce I think and even in this Ethiopia so and basically I am uh, talking on behalf of private sector and yes I, I should be a brief for the first time and maybe I will follow uh, if I have time uh, in the in the following time uh, in, in this time frame. So uh, I want to say just two things, very simple. One is the why the FFT data flow, uh, data free flow with trust matters to uh, private sector. Why uh, the companies and the industries uh, business are talking very seriously about the DFFT and or free flow of data. So uh, I will, that, that, that is the one point. And the second point is, uh, Ida san you have nicely mentioned about the mentioned to the, the government access, uh, which is ongoing the issue, and we have we have spent a lot of time, uh, many many, of much a uh, very long time, uh, in OECD and in a in, in some other fora uh, to uh, what is the solution to uh, have a good uh, good uh, rules. I wouldn't say that is the principles as in the sub mentioned, but uh, we might we might have uh, some a uh, good uh, governance rule or guidance to think about the, the government access to data. I will tell you that in later. And the first one, <clears throat> this this is this might be quite interesting. Why business is talking about the, the DFFT and data flow? So. Um, the, the quick answer to that is the uh, everyone needs to have a harmonized market and unified market. We don't want the market or economy itself to be fragmented. So <clears throat> everyone is just looking at the Ukraine and Russia. They were they used to be a, a single company, single country. 
a single nation, but now they are split out. So <clears throat> what caused by the that fragmentation, that's miserable things. And the, uh, the research shows the fragmentation of the legislation or regulation will lower the GDP or economic uh, growth by uh, up to the uh, uh, several percentage. And that should be a very big number if you think about it, how the GDP is naturally great. So uh, from the business point of view, single market <coughs> will benefit all of the business. So uh, we can assume a unified market. We can sell uh, our product to any part of the world. So uh, this is why we need the free flow of data. And we can utilize the, the, the computer system, networks, and the data wherever you are. So uh, the, we need uh, the, the free flow of data uh, to, uh, to have really have this situation and the, uh, raise our business and keep our business safely and stably. So uh, this is the basic reason why uh, we are looking at the free flow of data. So the single market is the number one. And the second one <clears throat> I will tell about is the trust. So uh, this is a, the, a common question uh, if I talk about the free flow of data and trust. So uh, trust is a, a very, very interesting concept and that will replace the consideration of the personal data protection and also the security and intellectual property protection. So, and from the business point of view, it is easy to understand. So if we have trust with our customer or with our business partners, wherever the, the uh, business partners uh, exist in, in any part of the world. So uh, in, in Japan's case, if we are outsourcing some of our business to the uh, ASEAN countries or even to the African countries. So we need a free flow of data and trust. And if we, if we have a trust to the, the companies in Africa, in, in Ethiopia, we can reduce the cost. If we, if we don't have a trust to a company in some country, so we, we will have to spend a lot of money and effort and human resource to make sure this company is safe, this company is trustable, this company won't harm our business anymore. So, uh, so we, we need a cost to ensure uh, those things. And also at the same time, uh, we, we, we can reduce the risk in our business. Uh, in, that is, uh, to, uh, sometimes it, that should be the, uh, to the consumer business and also the B2B business in outsourcing or business partnering. So <clears throat> this is a very easy explanation why from industry we need a DFFT. Not only the data free flow, but trust. So, uh, so I, I will tell uh, further more about this and if you have time, if I have time later. So uh, let's move on to the second part of the government access. So uh, the government access is relatively very new issue. And we were not talking about this five years ago, but uh, now it is a very important thing. And if you look up the, uh, the, the basic question, which is the who will control the resources in the digital economy and society? So this is the basic question if we think about the government access. And uh, I think the government access is not only to the data. So uh, now in OECD, the Yoichi-san is uh, working very hard in making uh, some, uh, some outcome about the government access to data held by the private sector. So it, it's, that's data, that's data. So um, I think I can expand this idea 
not only to data, but network itself. And so, and also the algorithm or program. So if you think about the network, that is the internet shutdown. So uh, that, 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 that can be said as the government wants to access control of the internet or network. And sometimes they want to shut down the network in their country and not to spread any uh, unpleasant data to in, in their country or to the world. So the, the government access to network I can replace this word to the internet shutdown. And also the Ayoji san mentioned, a little bit mentioned about the AI principles. So AI is a, a very new items we have to talk about, that the, but that's basically an algorithm. So a program to, uh, to help our society and our economy in a very good way in the future. So. The, uh, the if a government want to access to the algorithm, so we might have to use the malicious algorithm, malicious software, malicious uh, AI, artificial intelligence that can be called uh, as some ethical program or, or, or some human rights problem as well. So this is the basic structure. So uh, we have a dual issues. One is the uh, cross-border data flow or DLFT itself and also the uh, how we can tackle with the government excess control or improper control to digital economy and the digital society. So this is the basic uh, basics, uh, model of the this, this thoughts uh, we are usually talking about. So I will stop here and uh, I hope if, if I have time to uh, further explain this idea. So thank you, Yoichi san. Back to you. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Yokozawa, uh, for the comment uh, and the suggestions. Uh, 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 the, uh, I fully agree that a harmonized market uh, with uh, probably with transparency will be very important. Uh, and at the same time, as I said, you know, we are not proposing to other countries to change your regulation, adjust your policy framework to the same standard. But uh, we want to increase uh, interoperability between different uh, policy frameworks and regulatory frameworks so that data should not be stuck. Uh, digital technological solution uh, uh, can be utilized across borders. Uh, so I, I hope uh, 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 in this way we can promote the discussion internationally. And uh, as I said, probably in the beginning, or may, maybe I may have forgot, but uh, next year uh, Japan is taking G7 presidency and also Japan is hosting uh, IGF next year. So we want to discuss uh, this matter uh, with uh, government and also, uh, of course, uh, with other stakeholders uh, and uh, uh, besides the G7 uh, discussions. And then we want to come back to IGF uh, in autumn, in October, to discuss this in multi-stakeholder uh, uh, approach. So I would like to uh, use the remaining time uh, uh, with you uh, to invite uh, you to suggest uh, any discussion, any uh, a direction or any uh, aspect which we should approach uh, in our discussion next year and what uh, we should do uh, in IGF next year. Uh, so the uh, uh, floor is open and I invite everybody. Okay, please. Thank you very much, gentlemen. And uh, my name is Martin Hallen. I'm the Deputy Executive Director of the Internet and Jurisdiction Policy Network. We had the pleasure of working in the past together. And I'm uh, reacting also as part of my role of uh, co-leading something called the Data Sphere Initiative, which is a multi-stakeholder body that we have uh, spun off uh, early last year, where we very much talk about a holistic approach to data governance. And uh, I wanted to applaud uh, the Japanese government for the many points that you made that strongly resonate with the community that we've built since. We are talking about hundreds of stakeholders as really a multi-actor 
kind of structure that is there and everything that you mentioned from data sharing approaches, data localization, government access, it all resonates. And we wanted to propose also our willingness uh, to cooperate with you over the course of the next year in the run-up to the IGF. Uh, one of the projects that we will actually announce today during our uh, town hall will be an Africa forum for cross-border sandboxes for data, which already is an experimental mechanism that goes very much in that direction. And we will also have this contribute to a conference that we are aiming to organize next year that will most likely be related to a way how we can responsibly share data globally, a global forum, and we would love to time it also with the key milestones that the G7 presidency of Japan foresees so that we can provide input. And uh, one item that I wanted to bring up as a question is related also to the technological layer that would enable many of the regulatory items that we have discussed today. One of the topics that resonates strongly within our structure, and I'm wondering about also to what extent in the OECD discussions and also in the run-up to the presidency, this is a topic for Japan, is related to uh, charters and model templates for how those data spaces actually interact with each other because that's a prerequisite for interoperability. And another thing that we are also investigating are licensing agreements for data sharing and the whole question to what extent a data governance protocol could at one point be also technologically enabled, which I believe would be a very fascinating also multi-stakeholder discussion to be had concerning inclusiveness and engagement. So I was wondering about that aspect and look forward to tell you more about what we are doing and explain it in a little more detail where things could fit. Thank you. Thank you very much for your very encouraging comment. And actually, uh, we have been learning a lot from internet and the jurisdiction, probably from the year 2016. And uh, I met also uh, Mr. La Chapelle uh, in G20 meeting. So we look forward to working together and we will uh, wait for your uh, comment, further comment. Thank you very much. So any, okay, please. Thank you, thank you for sharing. So my name is Ying, and I'm a PhD candidate doing research on data governance, especially the cross-border cross -border data flow. And I have a question regarding the challenges for the inter international cooperation on data governance, since currently it's showing a divergence on the governance approaches of major economies and it increased the costs for the private sector. And from the, academ uh, from the academy area, maybe there is uh, opinions about the reasons behind the divergence. The privacy fragmentation may include the pol um, political interests, the industry interests. So I wonder um, what's your opinions from the official side? Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, uh, I hope I understood your question correctly, but uh, uh, mm, we have seen a lot of gap, especially uh, regarding privacy protection between uh, US and the European countries. And we wanted to fill the gap, bridge the gap. And we have mutual recognition with the EU uh, as a country. And, but uh, at the same time, we have very uh, similar uh, uh, concept or ideas with the U.S. Uh, policy framework, which currently do not have any uh, reg regulatory framework on privacy protection. So I think, uh, as I mentioned in part of the discussion, uh, there can be different approaches to, uh, uh, to reach uh, government legitimate uh, public uh, object policy objective and uh, it may depend on the social or cultural or uh, uh, economic conditions of the country so uh, we don't we cannot tell other countries uh, you need to this we, of course you, you had better do this but it, it should depend on their own conditions so our uh, uh, at least our objective is to bridge uh, the different frameworks, and uh, that would uh, also contribute to business uh, or even the academia. When you know you look at the uh, data for research and the studies, uh, it needs to flow uh, across borders freely. So, I hope uh, 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 when it comes to the regulatory affairs, government needs to take the lead. But uh, uh, this is not the matter lim uh, limited to regulation. Because even 
if there is no regulation, people may not want to use data if people are afraid of risks. So we need to to increase trust among people. So I, I think uh, we our, our approach is a whole society approach to increase trust uh, across uh, the society, across different stakeholders, and uh, uh, we don't believe uh, regulation is the only way to do that. I hope this answers your question. Thank you. Uh, first of all, uh, I'm glad that this panel is being held here and, and definitely will be uh, very interesting how to see this discussion evolve when IGF goes to Japan. Uh, I come, uh, my name is Thiago and I represent uh, the Brazilian Data Protection Authority. So the topic of cross-border data flow is definitely one of our priorities uh, and we currently are, are dealing with uh, st standard contract to close modeling, so we are looking for the APEC model, but as well uh, wh what we have in the EU. We know that uh, Japan, the government of Japan has this treaty agreement with the EU, which uh, was quite unique because it was read on the scope of the GDPR, and this is one of the topics that we want to learn more. But uh, what I would like to bring is that we have this feeling that many times Global South uh, is still out of the scope uh, in many of these relevant discussions, I would say, like both for Latin America and the African community. So I think it's very important that IGF has been held in Ethiopia this year because we have, I, I've followed some panels and heard a lot of voice, a lot of discussions that uh, we have common goals, let's say, but we have our specificities and this has to be brought to the table. And as a member of the Data Protection Authority, I would like to say that we are eager to share experience. We are part of the uh, Latin America Protection the red, uh, Network with the Data Protection Network. Uh, so we, we follow the experience there. Maybe that could be something interesting to following other discussions of cross-border data flow, I'm pretty much sure that other African representatives might have something as well. I believe for IGF Japan to be very successful, this is something that definitely should be taken in consideration. And, well, I finish here, but thanks for the opportunity. Thank you very much for the comment. Actually, uh, as I explained, uh, we have been uh, promoting this uh, data flow discussion mainly in G7, but uh, uh, the main reason is uh, that it's the most convenient and the most, uh, 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 what they say, earliest uh, opportunity for us. And uh, we are always uh, afraid that some people may say, you know, the only the small number of countries are uh, discussing uh, 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 their, pol their own policy development uh, without participation of other countries and uh, uh, splitting the world <laughs> into two groups. So uh, in the next G7, uh, we uh, are very keen on uh, uh, including the uh, element to approach to global south and uh, we want to to share our uh, uh, discussions uh, our achievements our uh, even challenges uh, with those countries so that the data can uh, flow uh, uh, easily around the world not the, within the uh, developed countries so that is very important and IGF is the most suitable uh, venue for the discussion I fully agree. Thank you very much. Hi, thank you. Um, my name is Florian Marcus. I'm an e-government consultant uh, from Estonia. Um, first of all, thank you so much for this panel. Uh, it's really, really important. Uh, just as, as an example, in Estonia and Finland, um, uh, all e-health files between, like for patients are uh, exchangeable across borders and we can see uh, this is just one small use case of, of how cross-border data governance can, can really save lives uh, occasionally as well. Um, to, to come to my question, and I do not want to single out Japan here at all, 
there is still a lot of work to be done in many countries. Uh, there was an interview, I believe, with uh, your digitalization minister, Taro Kono, uh, in September, where he mentioned that uh, 1,900 services uh, for businesses, so e-government services for businesses, uh, are still reliant on floppy disks and mini CDs. Um, and I believe that uh, Japan is not the only country where that is you know, still the case. Um, so the, the question is, um, cross-data governance is very important, but are we ready for that step? Uh, do we have digital data to even go across borders? Um, and what are the mechanisms where how you want to accelerate that digitalization? Thank you so much. Thank you very much for the very uh, difficult question. Uh, actually, I have, to, uh, I have to admit, you know, the, the e-government uh, of Japanese government is very much falling behind. And we are always, uh, you know, uh, looking at Estonia as a good ex uh, uh, example, good practices uh, uh, in, in the world. So uh, I'm quite sure Mr. Kono uh, wanted to learn more from Estonia. And uh, it is uh, true that uh, our uh, we have so many uh, bunches of items uh, to be achieved, uh, to be uh, processed to achieve, uh, improve our e-government. And uh, uh, regarding the question, uh, yeah, I, I understand, you know, we may need uh, to establish our internal uh, framework uh, to govern data and uh, 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 before we uh, uh, promote uh, uh, data flow across borders. I, I, uh, that uh, if we would proceed in that order, that would be more logical and more <laughs> secured. But, you know, we don't have the time before us in because uh, Japan is uh, 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 a society uh, rapidly getting older and also even shrinking. So we need to make use of data, digital technology, as much as possible. And this is very urgent for us. So we cannot wait until our very slow development of e-government <laughs> before we uh, allow, uh, uh, before we promote cross-border data flow. And private sector is uh, always quicker than us. Yeah, I see uh, Mukaberi, uh, online participant Mukaberi is uh, asking question. Uh, if you like, please take the floor. May I jump in? Yes, please. Uh, thank you very much for giving me the floor. Uh, <clears throat> Hello everyone and distinguished panelists. Uh, I'm Amir Mokapiri from Iranian Academy Community. Uh, I would like to talk about uh, the need and necessity of legal framework for cross-border uh, data governance. Uh, isn't, isn't it time to form a legal Frameworks for cross-border data governance within the United Nations to prevent strategic misuses of national big data of countries for illegitimate purposes by some dominant government and international digital platforms. As we all know, the data and big data is a national, is a strategic national asset for every country and is a new oil. Uh, this framework, this legally binding framework, could help digital trust and transparency at international level, especially in international level, and could help the formation of accountability framework for dominant actors in the internet and in the uh, digital economy landscape. And it could be it could also guarantee the development rights of developing countries. The right to development in cyberspace could be ensured by this framework. Uh, and also fundamental rights of user prevents the formation of, uh, and, uh, and this framework also uh, <clears throat> could, 
guarantee the fundamental rights of users and prevents formation of new data colonialism. My question is that, uh, what would be the contribution of United Nations and Global Digital Compact to address this critical issue and to establish drafting process of UN Convention on Data? Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to raise my issue. Thank you. Thank you very much for the very difficult question. I think uh, uh, data colonization is something we cannot accept anyway. And uh, uh, this, this shouldn't be such a way, you know, uh, the data uh, is moving across borders. You know, uh, you are not uh, uh, exploited by a big uh, 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 companies or uh, developed countries, but we share the benefit uh, on equal basis and digital uh, compact should contribute to the uh, development of global south not not only to them but uh, uh, we I, I think one of the very important uh, objectives is uh, to uh, uh, share the benefits uh, of digital technologies and the data uh, across uh, uh, countries around the world and across uh, stakeholders different stakeholders around the world so uh, I think uh, digital uh, compact should promote uh, such a, uh, uh, philosophy. But uh, uh, personally, I I'm not quite sure uh, whether it is time for us to discuss uh, data convention yet. Uh, as uh, the uh, e-government leader from Estonia pointed out, uh, we are still uh, trying to understand how to govern data even internally or domestically. And it is very difficult for policymakers or uh, 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 ne convention negotiators of the government to discuss data uh, uh, as a binding uh, agreement uh, across nations. But uh, this is my personal impression, and there can be more urgent uh, needs uh, uh, around the world. And uh, we, in, in any case, we need to keep learning uh, about the data. That's my answer. OK, so thank you very much. I think uh, time is uh, up. And uh, uh, thank, thank, thank you all. Uh, for the very active discussion. And uh, if you have more questions or comments, please contact me. Feel free to contact me. And uh, as I said, we will have important meetings uh, from uh, next year to uh, even beyond. And we want to uh, discuss, not among the government, uh, but uh, uh, more with multi-stakeholders. So we would always uh, welcome your input, comment, and uh, uh, even questions and uh, we look forward to working with you. So thank you very much.